this is one of the most dangerous streets in Brownsville. Yeah, it's uh, between uh, Brownsville Houses, Tilden, and Marcus Garvey. We're at uh, Rock and Dumont right now. You've got Marcus Garvey on one side. You've got the Tilden Houses on the other. And this is split by gang activity. You've got one gang controlling this side and the other gang controlling the other side. Yeah, yeah it is. It's, uh, and this is, this is the way it's been for a long time. That's one of the reasons why we're focusing on the 7-3, because such a high percentage of their violence is gang related. So a majority of crime is happening in a four block radius. Yeah, it's got the highest levels of violence. You know, that's, uh, you look at the 7-3 historically, and it's, it's a lot better than it was, but you know, in 1993, I think there were 74 homicides and 304 shootings. So just think about that level of violence within two square miles in 18. There were uh, 14 homicides and 47 shootings. So that's, the numbers have gone way down, but still compared to the rest of the city, it's more violent, and we have a moral obligation to make sure that we cut down, the, cut down that violence however we can. But it's got to, I think it's bigger than the NYPD. It's got to be everybody in the city, not just everybody in Brownsville. A part of what you guys are trying to do is really about community involvement. But there really is a lack of trust when it comes to the police and the community. I mean, you, you just have a history of illegal stop and frisk. A lot of black and brown people are feeling that they were pulled over unnecessarily. So how do you build that trust? So, and that, if we're going to push crime down even further, it's got to be all about trust. I need to know that they're on my side mm. and not against me. Like they're doing or they're not going to do whatever they want because they have a badge. It's hard to hate up close. I think if people have the opportunity to get to know our police officers, uh, they'd see how much they are committed to this community. That's how we're going to push crime down, by people actually having relations with the cops. And we put the same cops in the same sectors every day. We give them time off the radio so they can make these connections, make these relationships, build on these relationships, and build up that trust. That's how we're going to make life better for all New Yorkers. There are people here, just like over on the east side, who want the best for their family, who want the best for their kids. What do you say to them? People in this city, no matter where you live, you want what everybody wants. You want to you live in safety, you want to do by, by right uh, by your family, uh, and you want to have a peaceful existence. And that's what we're trying to do everywhere in New York City. And it shouldn't depend on what zip code you're in to make sure that you have a safe and, and fruitful and productive life. Do you feel that the NYPD has failed this community? No, I, I don't think the NYPD has failed this community. I think that uh, would, would not be a correct ca characterization. I think uh, a lot of things have been done over the years, and I speak about this all the time. We're certainly not a perfect agency. We're not a perfect organization. But if you go from 74 homicides and 304 shootings down to 14 homicides and 47 shootings. There's a tremendous amount of good work being done there. Now, there's been a lot of disconnect in many communities in New York City over the years, but we're, but we're moving forward, we're evolving, we're changing the way we do business to make sure that there is that real connection, and it needs to be, otherwise this isn't going to work. What's up, bro? How you doing, man? What's happening? How you doing? Nice to meet you, too. Jim O'Neill, how you doing? How you doing? Great to see you there. Those things in Brownsville. Nobody's never been here before. What are you going through here? We have a high crime rate, a lot of dope. You know, we got a section of this place that needs to be cleaned up. What is your, what yeah, is your thoughts? Yeah, that's his first name is James. Yes, yeah, sir. James. That's exactly why why we're here. And crime has been reduced, but not to the point where I, or, or anybody that lives in Brownsville thinks right. thinks it's thinks it's enough. Right. And I think we have to uh, have a different strategy moving forward. It can't just be about the NYPD. Right. It's right. got to be everybody. I, I think once we all work together, I think we can do a, a better job. If he comes out here and he stands here like he's doing today, and he shows that he's trying to do something, I think the neighborhood will get by. Because most of these people in this neighborhood are good people. You know, we need to help All right. in this neighborhood. Thanks, man. Thanks a lot, man. Glad you came. Thanks, All right. Thanks James. Great to, Great to see you, bro. Thank you, right, man. How frustrating is it for you? You've got crime down overall in the city, but you've got these really tough pockets, like here in Brownsville. Uh, it, 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 I don't think it's frustrating. I think it's just, you know, I, I understand what my job is, and that's to make every part of the city safe. So right now we're in the Tilden Houses. We're in Tilden Houses, right, right in the playground. And we just want to make sure that it's safe enough for people to come out here, be with their kids and feel safe here. Just about half of the violence here is gang related. And it's not like that in other places in the city. So we have to do whatever we can to make sure that we push that violence down. And that's bottom line, that's why we became cops, to keep people safe.
And uh, I think, you know, once we start building that trust, once we continue to build that trust, I think we'll be able to do good things with the community.